Next, let's break down the tutorial structure so it's easy to follow and finish. In other words, break it down to build it up. This is mainly applicable for longer and bigger tutorials. Try to keep each lesson short and focused, about 10 to 20 minutes with a clear goal. Start every lesson with a defined input and with a concrete output and make that output the next lesson's input. Let's take a look at some examples. Let's say I have decided to create this whirlpool effect for my intermediate to advanced tutorial. All right, so this effect is quite complex. It involves a lot of steps and stages. So it's always a good idea to define those stages before you start recording and split this into multiple parts that would make sense. Okay, so for instance, um, I have split it so far into eight parts, but um, this doesn't include rendering for now. So let's say in the first part, I'm going to cover the basics of the uh, flip solver. All right, uh, this is going over the project. So yeah, we start with just like a very simple flip container and we create a very simplified version of this whirlpool just to get over some of the tools and techniques, right? So once we define the strategy, we can next move on to building more advanced techniques. So uh, in this part, for example, I'm taking the input from the first part and I'm adding some custom velocities to this. Okay, so we're building some velocities, some custom forces, right? So after I built this force, for example, which is a quite technical lesson, um, I'm going to move on to the advanced flip simulation. So I'm going to take the output of this lesson, which was the velocity field, and then I'm going to continue in this lesson with that velocity field. And it's always a good idea to break these down into uh, shorter sections. So you can see right now, this is uh, so far 38 minutes. So I might re-record it to, to be more like 20 or 25 minutes, right? And um, the more you can break these up, the better. Uh, of course, when you have to teach uh, more complicated concepts uh, related to flip fluids, uh, meshing, velocity fields, it can get quite heavy. Right, so um, it might take a couple of takes, but it all will come with uh, experience. All right, so after this, for example, we have uh, I'm just gonna skip. So we have some some meshing techniques, right? Which is another logical step. So after the flip simulation, you would do uh, meshing, and after meshing, you would do white water. Okay, you would simulate some white water points. Then, um, you know, you would do some caching, optimization, export to Solaris, lighting, rendering, and so on. So you can think in uh, different CGI creation stages. Uh, another great example is uh, this foundations model render animate. So you can see that uh, in this example, we have a bouncing ball, which is modeled, rendered, and then we also have um, a simulated element, right? So you can see how nicely this is broken down into very small parts, which are 7 minutes, 10, 16. Uh, so this is very easy to follow, right? And then, for example, if you take a more complicated example, which is this um, helicopter one, This one is going to be uh, broken down in, into more parts. So you can see first we're getting kind of the idea of the shot. Then we're setting up the folder structure, uh, you know, bringing in the assets, fracturing the glass um, and other different elements, building the constraints, doing RBD simulation, you know, rendering different elements. So the more complex the concept that you're teaching, the more you'll have to break it down. 
for the audience to have a better experience.